Hello and welcome to So This Is Thailand. I'm Johan Wimonchalau. สวัสดีครับ I'm Tapani Manawe. สวัสดีค่ะ I'm Anne Belinda Skinner. สวัสดีค่ะ And I say this every time, but welcome, welcome back. To the back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm becoming a bit of a permanent face around here. Well, thank you very much for having me back. It's uh, really good. Well, it's nice to have you here, and, and I know we always look at first. Speaking of first, we were actually talking beforehand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Your first trip to Asia Teak. It was Asia Teak. It's an amazing place. I don't know if you've ever been there, um, but it's it's incredible. You've you've been there, haven't oh, you? Oh, dozens of times. But uh, do we? Do we uh, dog Tara in here by uh, Tara? Have you been there? I have never been there. Why don't you tell me about it? I'm so out of the loop. It's it's really amazing. It's really good to see. What I like about it is that Thailand is using, or Bangkok is using, its harbour front, its waterfront, mm-hmm. and its uh, restaurants and the night market, Swan um, Swan Lum mm-hmm. Night Bazaar. They've moved down there. The Jo Louis Puppet Theatre and Calypso. They're all down there as well. And so it's all on the river, uh, so you can sit there, and people are just hanging around. There's buskers. Um, actually, the funny one was uh, the busker, as we were talking about yesterday, the uh, Gundam style. <laughs> There was three buskers all doing the Gundam style, and they were uh, going around busking. And it's a really, really good uh, venue. I really enjoy it. And, and what they've done is they've designed it. They've kind of bit a little bit of nostalgia. Into it. They've they've redesigned it so it looks like the old warehouse of which. Mm. We're there mm. along the riverfront, so you have it in in the shell of the warehouses. But you, like you said, they've had all those great, you know, little small shops and mm. handicraft s- uh, stores that used to be at Lumpini, uh, mm. Suanlum, and they brought them down there along with some of the other great places uh. and a lot of new uh, restaurants as well. So yeah. good eating, good shopping, great view down there, and very convenient to get to. You can just get there right off of the BTS station from s a p a n t a k s a n And mm. there's a boat that takes you directly there. Yes, and it's a nice way to travel. I love going on the boat on the <laughs> river. I think it just chills you out. Oh, you see, my excuse is I get motion sickness, so oh, <laughs> boat, I get boat sick. So that's why I haven't been. Oh, and your walking mm. can also be a, a, a positive experience. <laughs> yes, good <laughs> exercise. Th- huh? We do advise driving down there though, because the traffic is very, very bad, and the parking is, can get quite limited. Yeah. So especially on the weekends or at night, it can get. It can get. Mm, it, it, mm, it, yes, it can. It's not far from the expressway, but um, it's just that small part of the road that just yeah gets chock a block. Mm. So it's very speak. good to hear, though, because I did uh, miss Swan Lum Night Bazaar when it moved, and um, uh, a lot of uh, people who visit ask me, "Where's the mm. night market?" and I said, "We don't have one at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> no, we have one again. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but definitely worth the visit." Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, looking at talk of the town, we'll look at the first item, which is about Suwanapum, and I'm sure now this affects Don Mueang Airport as well, since Don Mueang has just opened. But a big problem at Suwanapum is uh, when travelers arrive and uh, they get out into the arrivals hall, there are illegal tour guides and taxi drivers who kind of corner them and then uh, rip them off. Um, the guides actually receive a, a high commission; they receive between 100 to 500. But for passengers, and uh, then they charge them very high fares to take them to certain hotels and to certain shops, or even uh, drop them off halfway to try and bargain for higher fares. So this is a really, really bad impression if you're arriving in Bangkok for the first time. And the airport uh, of uh, Thailand, the AOT, is trying to suppress this by uh, forming three teams of officials who stand guard at s u w a n a p u m around the clock. And uh, they will be installing one-way gates by the end of the year at the departures lounge to block people from exiting on the fourth floor and catching cabs from there as well. So these are some of the developments that's happening in s u w a n a p u m at the moment. Well, I have to say wow. that I mean that's what I used to do mm. when I get off a plane. Instead of going to mm. the the departures downstairs, mm. I would go into the arrivals where I got off the taxi in the first place and just get them as they're leaving. Yeah. And then, <laughs> And just make sure then that when you get into the taxi, that the meter is number one on, and number two, you know, there's mm, a, mm. there's an understanding that you know I know where I'm going. Yeah. Door be off. Well, they don't. <laughs> they seem not to like this. I mean, um, the actual proper taxis that charge you an extra 50 baht, they're very safe because they write down your address, so mm, they know true. exactly where you're going. And you know, if you get lost along the way, then you can actually chase up and know the driver that was taking you. But Um, yeah, in terms of I think people who are locals and know their way around, then you think, hey, I can take care of this, and it's much quicker, of course. Yeah, I, I tell friends when they come out because you do get bombarded as soon as you've walked mm. through those gates. 
you just get bombarded by people and you know want a taxi, want this, mm. um, and it's very confusing. And people, I don't think, know what is legal and what's not. So I just tell friends to you know keep going down and just follow the airport taxi sign until they're outside because, as you said, it's a safe way to go because they write it all down. Well, yeah, and yeah. there's so many people kind of vying for your attention. It can yeah. be really like uh, you don't know where to look or where to go because you think everyone is the official one. They look official enough, but you never mm. know. In a lot of taxis, if you look actually in the back, they'll actually have a, a, a summary of the fares of the you know, expected mm. cost. So they know if you're all right from Swanapum to this particular area in town, here's the projected cost, you know, obviously taking into account things like yeah. traffic. But there you can see it's already printed there. You can understand, oh, oh I'm, getting, I'm yeah. paying double than what I normally should. So. Yeah. Well, I guess the main news for us is that uh, we're not going to be able to take those uh, <laughs> sneaky cabs from the I fourth know. floor <laughs> anymore. The one-way gates are being installed. But there always is, as we've covered before, the air, the air link that brings you directly into the city. So if you'd like to avoid that whole mm. taxi thing in the first place, mm. you can actually get taxis within the city. Take the right. air link. Nice, yeah. quick, easy, convenient. Good to go. Good Especially with the, if taxi drivers don't speak a lot of English, uh, the visitors coming over and you just say to them, catch the uh, airport link. Mm. Mm. It's much easier. Well, moving along to the next bit of news, in looking at the ecology, down in Phuket, they've actually found six sea turtles and a baby dolphin just drifting along. And now they believe that, especially during this monsoon season, with all the increase in terms of wave activity and a lot of fishing as well, that the turtles and the dolphins actually get caught up either in the nets or they get bombarded by these heavy waves and kind of pushed off course as it were. Now of those six turtles, all of them have been put back into rehabilitation. Uh, three of them were Ridley turtles and then three more were just the normal, I guess, garden variety sea turtles. The Cut. dolphin, the dolphin, it's the baby dolphin itself, you know, by itself just found kind of drifting along. Oh. It's only about a meter long. So again, put back into rehabilitation. Hopefully they're able to, you know, let mm. it get so it's big enough to be re-released mm. back into the water. Mm. Oh, well, hopefully that's not serious if they keep their eye on, on what's the cause of it. Yeah, mm. and, and the, you know, the, the scary part is you know, the fact that a lot of these sea turtles, you know, some of them are endangered, and all of these were females. So you know, it's those mm. you know, the oh, ones that are laying the eggs. And a lot of that lay eggs. And that's a problem. And they found that you know, a lot of the fishing nets, the turtles get caught up. And not necessarily, you know, they kind of get caught up and the fisherman gets them and releases them. Some of these nets, you know, they're, they're torn, they're ripped because mm. of the stormy weather. Yeah. And so they're caught up in the nets for mm. months at a time and then they get deformities and mm. you know, they're injured. And so, oh. you know, it's, it's quite a, a That's sad. That's very sad. sad. Yeah. <laughs> very sad. Well, uh, on to uh, more hopeful and positive news. We're talking about high rises along the uh, Dindang Road. Uh, as you drive along, you probably see the old flats of Dindang on the left as you head down. And uh, these will soon be demolished to make way for the new high rises. It's uh, being built by two state agencies. I do believe that uh, the Mass Rapid Transit Authority of Thailand, or MRTA, actually own that land. And they're working in conjunction with the National Housing Authority to uh, build a 30-story uh, building, um, which are going to be high-rises all the way along to make better use of the land. So far, from the residents, uh, this project has received 80% uh, support, and uh, the 20% who oppose it are actually owners who are entitled to it but have rented out their properties. Now, because this is going to be uh, a well, in one of the prime locations, actually, the orange line is going to pass through there, coming from Bangkunon and Bangkapi and Minburi. So very soon, it will be in a very convenient location to take public, public transport. And uh, this 30-story uh, apartment will be uh, built and expected to be completed in 2014. Well, I know a lot of times what happens is you have you know, this really kind of prime real estate Developers look at it and think, you know, I can make a lot more money if I build something better there. Mm. But it's good to know that at least the residents who are currently there in the old buildings are the first ones to be offered the spaces in the new mm. buildings. Mm. So it's not like you're displacing people. But mm. it'll be interesting to see how much exactly those mm. are going to cost to see how many can actually afford those. Yeah, that's right. If, uh, if the transport is coming up, the expensive uh, real estate, they say mm. location, location. <laughs> so uh, hopefully they can accommodate everybody into, into that scheme. Well, they actually had, if I remember correctly, a few years ago, they actually had some problems there before. A uh, fire had broken out, and they were looking at the, the age of the buildings. In fact, those mm. buildings should be demolished. I mean, they have exceeded their, their lifespan. They're, yeah. they're already over, you know, mm. 
you know, they are over 50 years old. They're yeah. very, very old, and probably some of the safety hazards that you know we take into consideration now weren't taken into consideration back then. So it's a bit unsafe, and when it's overpopulated as well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, last on the list for Talk of the Town is something we've covered before and which has been in the news many times, and that's Formula One in Thailand. Mm -hmm. Last time we talked about it, we were looking at possibly in Chiang Mai around the night, the, mm. the night uh, safari up there and, or somewhere close by because they have lots of land. Now <laughs> we're bringing it back down to, Thai, uh, back to Bangkok, excuse me, uh, mm. after the successful Formula One in Singapore that some of you may have visited yourselves. Mm -hmm. There was an informal uh, agreement to host it here in, in Bangkok somewhere in 2014. Now, obviously, there are some major hurdles that have to be overcome here. You know, the, the logistics of it, just the streets, preparing the streets here to be able to have Formula One you know, mm -hmm. cars mm -hmm. on them. Yeah. Re repaving is, is just the beginning. Can you it, imagine all the potholes that oh, will need to be covered? <laughs> well, it's, it's time to take shares out in the bitumen company. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess that's good news. You know, if it does come, they will have to improve the roads for there. Now, mm. one of the big biggest obstacles is obviously the local residents. It is by fact that it's Formula One, it's a noisy sport. So mm. they're, they're worried about the noise, the noise pollution, and there might have to be a referendum, a vote by the community itself to whether they're willing to allow that race to occur. Mm -hmm. Even though mm -hmm. it's only going to be, all it would only be uh, along you know two or three days. But yeah. mm. again, finding the location difficult. But the event in uh, Singapore draws such a, a huge mm. crowd, and they have done it in spectacular style with you know concerts, and it's like a celebration. I think it's you know it's fun. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it is. I don't know how they'll be able to do it. And 2012 is quite scary. Uh, sorry, 2014 is quite scary considering we are in 2012 now. <laughs> it's a lot of work. You've mentioned the logistics of it, mm. the safety. I mean, these cars are extremely fast. Um, yeah. They have to, safety standards have to be as an absolute optimum. Mm. Um, can Thailand do that? Um, and as you said, all just the everything, the after party and everything else. Mm. And it's handling the of volumes work. of people who are going to be coming to it and ensuring their safety as well. So, it's well, Yeah, well some of you may remember that um, in 2010 Red Bull Racing actually staged kind of a demonstration street car racing here. It had about uh, 100,000 people that attracted and they did race mm. through the streets uh, along Ratchanamun Avenue. <laughs> yeah. So it was very limited, it was very controlled. But they showed that it was possible, at least on that scale. So it would be interesting to see whether they can actually meet the Formula One standards mm, mm, and, yeah, and get it here. 2014, eh, <laughs> maybe, maybe worry. not. But it's very exciting. I mean, I do love Formula One. So <laughs> let's see. <laughs> well, that's it for Talk of the Town. I guess coming up after the break, we do have Vita. That's right. Valerie is out and about with Sven Eriksson. Now, Sven is the talk of the town. Everybody's excited to have him here in Bangkok. He's actually training the BEC Tero Sassana team. Um, so Valerie is uh, pretty excited to go talk to Sven. Uh, so coming up uh, very shortly with VTalk. And after VTalk, we will go to Thaiways with Kun Ban, who is going to take us through what to do when you approach a monk. <laughs> 